Man, what a pleasure to see so many great American patriots out in the audience. How many of you are ready to very steadily, calmly, peacefully take our country back? Yeah, I figured that'd be the response, and obviously we have so many people who are tuning in now and will tune in in coming days. Make no mistake, the whole purpose of gathering all of you here for Policy Fest, for making this broadcast worldwide, is to remind people that yes, especially after Saturday's tragedy and near tragedy with our former president, it is always darkest before dawn. But to quote our former wonderful First Lady Melania Trump from yesterday. Dawn is here again, and we need to have smiles on our faces in spite of that tragedy, knowing that we have the resolve, we have the plan, and we also have the support of the American people to restore this country's greatness once again. Thanks for being part of it. <laughs> Friends in the media, and I mean that with only a little bit of sarcasm, have spent a little bit of ink, rightly, talking about the conservative movement's plans for taking back this country. And we welcome that conversation because, as is evidenced over the last few days, the more we talk about policy, the more we talk about ideas, the more we welcome the conversation about the overreach of the federal government and the centralization of power, especially in Washington, D.C., the more our friends in the media, and now I do mean that genuinely, the more our friends in the media will recognize that the vast majority of American people understand it is time to get their sovereignty back against the federal government that frankly has run roughshod over them for too long. Sometimes people ask me, well, Kevin, you know, what, what really is the purpose of something like Project 2025? Is it X or Y or Z? And what's the difference between the presidential campaign or the RNC platform? And, and my response would be the response that any of us who've been active in the conservative movement over the last half century would say, which is that it actually isn't about the project itself. The, the label's almost immaterial. The project is a representation of what a majority of Americans feel and believe and who have been begging, for what they've been begging for, which is a plan for how you do all of these things that are the themes of this great gathering. Not just dismantling the administrative state for the sake of some political science reason, but the real purpose to restore self-governance to the American people so that they can, according to their choice, their customs, their habits, build their families, live in their communities, go about their lives and their businesses and their jobs, as we like to say, living the good life. You might say that the real purpose of this huge, broad-scale effort, unprecedented in the history of the conservative movement, isn't so much about policy, per se, as it is to remind people, elites in Washington, New York, the left coast, Brussels, that time has come to stop forgetting about forgotten Americans. People who for too long have seen their businesses shuttered. People who for too long have seen their communities deteriorate. People in the Rust Belt who have seen the ravages of misguided policies that place an emphasis on elite interests and not an emphasis on the interests of the everyday American. Permit me an example that's personal. I was partly raised by my grandfather. I wrote about him recently in a First Things article and we'll be writing about him more this year because I think he really personifies what's going on here. You have someone in your family, no doubt, who personifies this, this point, which I think makes my Papa Pete really special. He had very little formal education. His first native language was Cajun French. He was a man's man. He was a man of great faith. He's a man who loved this country, served as a US Marine in World War II. And while being a man's man, he also had this really special tender spot for the women in his life, for his kids and his grandkids, and especially for this country. He was a lifelong Democrat, but he loved Ronald Reagan. And I know if he were alive today, 
he would love Donald J. Trump. But why? Is it, is it President Trump's policy record on the border? Sure. Is it his policy record across many policy areas? Sure, there's great agreement there between people like my grandfather and President Trump. But it's actually something deeper, and that's, that's the point that I'm driving at here for you and your families, and obviously speaking on behalf of all of us who've been part of this great project. And it is that for once in modern American history, we have a plan among a unified movement to speak on behalf of the everyday American, the forgotten American, not just someone like him from the Deep South, not even just people who have seen their communities in the Rust Belt deteriorate and diminish, but for new members of our coalition, working class, multi-ethnic coalition that for the first time in modern American history really does threaten the centralized power of the American left. The reason progressive Democrats hate these ideas so much is because they are a threat to their power. And so let us, while being very clear about the intentions of our language, also state very clearly that while there are many reasons to wake up today in the United States of America and be discouraged, to be despairing, to worry, that there are tens of millions of Americans who agree with us. We may not agree on every little detail, that's not the point. In the spirit of Reagan, in the spirit of President Trump, in the spirit of so many leaders, the point is to work together on that 80, 90, 95% of overlap and go fight like heck, steadily, with resolve, with great peacefulness, and show the radical left that once and for all we are controlling this country again. And so, thank you. And yes, that does mean that we have to get about the business of not just policy work and political work, not just about the business of electing good men and women to office, but we have to be about the business of restoring America in our communities, in our families, in our churches, our professional associations, our bowling leagues, our little league baseball teams. You see, that's really where America is. New York and Washington and the left coast want us focused on politics all the time. But the lesson of the last few days and the motivation of something like Project 2025, ironically, is to make Washington a heck of a lot less important in our lives so that we can go about our own lives the way we would like. And so, this entire conference, our work at Heritage for the rest of the year is dedicated not just to all of you and to that huge majority of Americans, that huge group that we might call forgotten Americans, but personified by the fallen hero from Saturday, Corey Comparator, whom we would honor given the tragedy that took his life. But I would dare say, not having met Corey, but feeling like I know him that he personifies what this movement is about. A man who went to church every Sunday, a man who literally gave his life protecting his family, a man who is a, doing something that any of us from the far left to the far right should think we should be able to do at any point in this country and not be threatened with violence, and that's attend the political rally of our choice. But you see, Corey and his service as a firefighter his witness as a husband, as a man of God, is someone who represents the vast, vast, vast majority of the American people. And so I'll ask you, for the rest of this week, for the rest of this year, particularly when we're in moments when we're talking to family and friends who might have a different political perspective than us, to remind them it's not even so much about the policies themselves as it is about the spirit that Corey personified, which is to live our lives well, in great virtue, but also fearlessly, on behalf of not just in our, our, in our faith above, but on our faith that this country, the United States, is still the greatest experiment in human freedom in history, and in spite of its warts, 
And in spite of its challenges, we now finally, after a long interlude, have leaders like President Trump and many other men and women and a plan that will actually do honor to Corey's sacrifice. God bless you as we begin this process of taking back this great country. Thanks for being part of it.